as most of you know, if you are on my social media or if you know me in personal life, you know that my husband and I are licensed foster parents and we have been licensed. Uh, it will be five years in March, I believe of 2020. Uh, my timeline might be a little off, but I think we got our original probationary license in March. So, um, a lot of you also know, if you follow me on social media, that we recently just adopted one of our kiddos through the foster care program. And since then, I've had a lot of people questioning me about foster care. Um, they've been asking me about the process, what it takes to be a foster parent, and all kinds of things. And so for a while, I have been meaning to sit down and make this video and just kind of share with you about our experiences in foster care and what our process looked like. Um, and so I was just fortunate enough today that our kiddo didn't have too many appointments and that our um, babysitter is here because I'm also very fortunate that this summer and going into the school year we have had um, someone come to our house to help me out a couple days a week because it's sometimes almost impossible to get anything done having three children under the age of three. Um, and so I am just very fortunate and lucky that she's here today. So I'm kind of hiding out in our basement, um, in my husband's, um, man cave, I guess you could call it, um, just to sit down and make this video. Um, basically I'm just going to talk about what our process looked like to become foster parents. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment on this video. Um, if you would maybe like to see a video about something else pertaining to foster care or about our story or our adoption story or anything like that, please also comment and let me know. I'm not opposed to making more videos about our life and our journey as foster parents. I would really like to continue to spread the word about foster care and help anyone who may be interested in also becoming a foster parent. So my husband and I got married in the spring of 2014 and we didn't really have any definite plans to expand our family. Um, we had my stepson who was with us about 50% of the time and we, like I said, just didn't have any definite plans of expanding our family. We didn't know what our family was going to look like. And one day we were at church and a fellow foster family was um, speaking about um, some needs that they had that they were bringing um, in before our church in regards to their foster child. And I just said to my husband, I said, we should look into being foster parents. And he said, okay, um, let's do it. And so that was in the fall of 2014. We um, didn't really tell anyone that we wanted to do this or that we were looking into this. But um, we both just agreed that it would be something that we would look into and we would just go from there. So the first step in our process was that... Basically, I just went to the county that we live in, um, to their website, and just filled out an inquiry form, um, just saying that I was interested in knowing more about becoming a foster parent, and I put my contact information on there, and I sent it, and that was that. Um, I would say within a week, we received a phone call from probably one of the coordinators or something. I couldn't even tell you who we actually talked to, um, but it probably was one of the coordinators there. Uh, and she asked me some pretty basic questions and just, um, you know, asked kind of about our education and our family and just wanted to know why we wanted to be foster parents. Um, and so I answered those questions and she said, okay, 
well, I'll forward your information to one of our coordinators and I'll send you out a packet of information about being a foster parent and someone will be in contact with you. Um, we got the paperwork in the mail and there was a lot of papers involved in it. And I actually made a list here of all the papers that were in there. So it came with forms that we had to have filled out by our doctor saying that we were physically and physically fit and healthy enough to care for a child. We had to have a TB test done. We had to verify our home insurance, our car insurance. We have pets, so we had to have um, our veterinarian fill out paperwork saying that our um, vet that our animals are under medical care yearly. We had to have their rabies vaccine information. Um, we had to have, I believe, three personal references. We had to have a reference from one of our neighbors. Um, we had to have references from our employers. At that time, I was self-employed. So I had one of my employees fill out the paperwork. Uh, because my stepson was in school at the time, we had to have his teacher fill out paperwork. Um, as a reference, uh, we had to fill out financial information. Um, so how much money we made, how much money we were spending every month. Uh, we had questionnaires that we had to fill out that was basically about who we are as people and our beliefs um, and our childhood. We had to fill out um, child care background checks that were then mailed in. Uh, we had to have emergency plans for our house, so we had to come up with uh, fire safety evacuation plan. We have to have extended safety plans like this is where we would go if we had to evacuate our home and those types of things and this is how you would be able to get in contact with us if we needed to go to those homes. Uh, we got a licensing manual, um, a licensing checklist to look through. It was just a lot of paperwork and it was pretty overwhelming. Uh, it wasn't too long after we got that paperwork uh, that we got a phone call from the coordinator. Um, and the great thing for our case is that the coordinator that we started this process with is still our coordinator today. So uh, we've developed a relationship with her and uh, we work really well with her and we really enjoy seeing her. And she actually comes out every month with um, our kiddo social workers um, when we have kiddos placed here um, just to stay up to date on our cases and make sure that we have everything that we need as foster parents and so we have a really great coordinator um, I don't think that all I mean we are just fortunate that our coordinator has stayed there I know of other foster parents in our area who have had changes in coordinators because their coordinators have left or um, taken different positions within the department. Uh, but basically she came out and she went over all that paperwork with us that we got, uh, which was good because we were very overwhelmed by all of that. She also came out and did um, fingerprints uh, for us to be checked on a federal database to make sure we don't, like we're not criminals or anything like that. She also did a walkthrough of our home and told us things that we needed to fix or add for us the only thing that we needed to fix was that we did not have a handrail on our hand um, on our railings going upstairs and so we had to add that um, and we had to add outlet covers to all the outlets we had had to put child locks on our cabinets uh, at that time my stepson was four and old enough that we didn't worry about any of those things so we had never gotten any of those things um, put on anywhere um, we also had to have a smoke detector on every floor and in every sleeping space which we didn't have so we had to add those we also had to add uh, carbon monoxide detectors uh, on every floor we had one in the basement but we needed to add one um, on the other two floors of our house um, and I think that was all that we had to add to our home or to fix. Oh, we also had to buy a fire extinguisher because we didn't have one of those. Um, 
she also came out and asked us questions generally like she just asked general questions about us just kind of getting to know us as people um, and then like I said she went over all of the paperwork with us and then went over the expectations um, of additional things that you have to do as a foster parent other than just caring for the children so she let us know that the first year of our foster license would be a probationary foster license and then um, during that time you have to complete a uh, training which I think it was 30 hours of training I think you take 10 three-hour classes um, and that's the foundations training so basically in that they go over everything about being a foster parent um, what things mean in court hearings why they do things the way they do them um, they give you tools to help foster children cope um, with being removed from the home they give you tools as a parent um, to help cope with the added stress and all of that that comes along with being a foster parent um, parenting techniques um, just all kinds of useful information uh, very beneficial if you don't have much experience working with children for me I had worked in daycare and taught preschool for quite a long time that a lot of behaviors that were potentially that we may see were not necessarily new behaviors for me um, however for my husband he didn't really have a lot of experience with other children other than my stepson um, so he got a lot of more useful information I think out of it um, than what we did or than I guess what I did um, although there were a lot of things that I learned um, from being in the training um, she also let us know that after our initial probationary license was up then you have a two-year license after that so every two years we have to get relicensed and our relicensing process is basically just to fill out the checklist again and do the walkthrough of our home again. And then um, we have to turn in our continuing education. And within the two year time frame, we have to complete 20 hours um, of continuing education. Uh, they like for you to do 10 hours every year. Um, in my experience, if you don't turn in those 10 hours after like the half of your license is up they don't I mean they don't take your license away from you or anything like that um, but that's just what their recommendation is I suppose that you don't let it all pile up at the end um, which we are coming up to the midway point of our current two-year license in the beginning of next year and <laughs> we haven't done any continuing education however we do have some educate continuing education planned for later this year that'll give us uh, I think six or seven hours so we will have a good chunk of this year's continuing education done then more towards the end of the year uh, it's really hard for us to get it done during the summer we just have so much going on and so I like that they um, allow you to kind of get it done at your own time frame within those two years um, after she came for that initial appointment, we were told that she would send in our background information, she would send in our fingerprints, and once she got that information back, uh, she would call, give us a call, and then she would come out and start the formal interview process. So she came out initially in, I want to say maybe late October, early November, and then with the holidays, by the time all of our information came back, um, she came back out for our formal interviews in January. So this process um, was kind of a three-part process, I guess. She interviewed um, myself and my husband individually, and I think she also interviewed us together a little bit just to kind of see our interactions with one another. 
Um, so she came out the first time and did my individual interview. In this interview, she went through the questionnaire that we had already gotten. She asked us about our childhood. She asked us about our siblings. She asked us um, a lot of personal questions. Um, it was pretty invasive. Um, she asked about mental illness in our families. She asked about drug and alcohol usage personally and in our families. Um, she talked about um, our relationships with our family, uh, with our parents, our siblings, extended family, um, our relationship with each other. Um, she asked about all of that kind of stuff. Then she did the same with Jeff. Um, and then she, oh, she also asked about any struggles we have may have had in our lives and, uh, what we did to cope with them or how to overcome them. At that point, um, my father had already passed away. And so she asked about that and, um, what I did to cope with his passing and, um, how I managed the stress of all that kind of stuff. She, um, then brought us together. So she came out and did my interview. She came out a different day and did my husband's interview. And then I came home, I think at the end of his interview. And then at that point she did an interview of us together. And we also had to answer question, like a questionnaire. And it was the same questionnaire about you and your spouse. And it was just to see like if you and your spouse had the same types of answers, um, and again, those questions were about drug abuse, alcohol, um, all of those kinds of things. And we have to fill out that questionnaire every um, two years when we redo our licensing. Um, but we don't have to go through like all of the other stuff about our childhood. It's just that one questionnaire that she fills out or that we fill out about each other. She asks us about any medication that we may take and why we were prescribed it. She asked what our plan was to keep that out of the reach of children. She asked us if we went to any kind of therapy or counseling and why. Uh, and then after she finished with all of that, she came out a third time. And this time she sat down with my stepson uh, in the dining room and we were just over in the living room. So it's an open area. Um, and she just basically asked him about himself, kind of just getting to know him. She asked him a little bit about our parenting styles, but again, kids will be kids and they say what they say. Uh, she didn't really have any concerns about anything, um, that she said, uh, the two of them probably sat there and talked for a good 45 minutes because if you know my stepson, he will um, chat with anyone. Uh, he loves to talk to people. So that was great. She fell in love with him right away. And every time she comes, uh, she's excited when he's here because she thinks he's the greatest kid ever. Um, so basically, after all of the interview process was done, she told us that she would write up her report of our home study and she would turn it in to her supervisors and they would look everything over and then she would call and let me know whether we were licensed or not. So all of the interviews took place in January and I think we got the phone call in March of 2015 that we were officially licensed. And so we kind of just sat there. We didn't really do a whole lot. Um, we started our foundation training in April. Um, we drove all over the place to take that training um, up to an hour away. The only reason we did that was because we did not want to wait um, the training that was offered in our area was offered at the end um, of the year. And it was really pushing it with our one-year license that if something happened and we were sick and couldn't attend one of them and we need to reschedule uh, and go to one somewhere else or we, like it was during the winter. So if the weather was bad and that canceled something, it was getting really close 
for us to not um, be able to get it in within our one-year license. So we chose to go to several different places um, to get our training done. And because of that, we ended up not taking our training in order, which worked fine for us. Um, for some people, it might not be a great idea to not take it all in order. Um, but like I said, it, it worked fine. For us. So we started that in April. Um, they called us and we did some respites. So basically, uh, for those of you who don't know, respite is when you provide care for uh, another foster family who may just need a break for the weekend or maybe going on vacation and can't take the kiddos with them. We did respite for kiddos who still lived in the home with their bio parents. Um, however, their parents needed a break or needed extra help. Um, we had kiddos here while the bio parents were moving and they needed, they didn't have the resources to have anyone watch their kids or they needed to attend doctor's appointments or um, appointments to get housing set up or things like that. Um, so there are kiddos who weren't removed from the home, but the parents just didn't have the support system or extended support system available to help with their kids. Um, so we did that um, for a while. And then in, I think around May, we got a phone call for our very first placement. And I actually ended up having to say no um, to that placement. It was well within the parameters of what we wanted in a foster kiddo. Um, but I was really sick at the time. It was for a, a newborn baby girl. Um, but I had a really bad cold at the time. My husband had a really bad cold. My stepson had a cold. And we just did not feel comfortable. I didn't feel comfortable um, bringing a brand new baby into our home where we were all incredibly sick. Um, and we had been sick for a while. And so I just said, like, you know, we're all really sick here, and I don't think bringing a newborn here is really the best idea right now. And so I was really disappointed that we had to say no. Um, but I kept maintaining, like, everything happens for a reason. This was just not the placement for us for whatever reason. Like, there's a different kiddo out there who needs us more than um, that placement needed us. So... In the meantime, we did more respite again. Um, we started doing respite for um, a really great family. Um, and their kiddos were here um, on a consistent basis. And so that was really great. Um, we kind of had our feet in both worlds. We still had our own time to do what we needed. But then we had this great group of kids who... We're also here um, pretty consistently and then they would go back home and we would get a break and it was really going really great. And then in the middle of June 2015, we got a phone call for an emergency placement of a little boy um, that we said yes to. And that pretty much is our um, journey from there. We had um, that little boy for a year. Um, then we did respites again for a summer, and then we got a placement of a little girl, um, and we had her for, um, I think maybe four or five months, and then she went back home, and then we had a break and did respites again for about a month, and then, um, we got the phone call for our little guy, um, that we have since adopted. He never left. Um, and he had, and still kind of has a lot of, uh, medical needs. Um, he has some special needs. And so he really took up a lot of our time. Um, it took a lot, um, to care for him in the beginning. And so, uh, we did not take any other placements. We did do some random respites, um, in there, while he was placed here, um, but we didn't take any other placements. Like I said, there was just a lot that went into his care and getting him on the path that he needed to be on. Um, so we didn't do anything 
um, as far as other placements. And then um, we opened ourselves back up to placements um, this past winter, so like January, February of 2019, and we just didn't have any calls for placements. And then um, we were working our way towards our adoption, and I thought, oh, like our adoption will be this summer, and it will be nice to have a really great break, and um, you know, just kind of have time together to bond as a family. And about a month before our kiddos' adoption, we got a phone call and took in um, two other kiddos, um, and so we have three kids right now. Um, well, we have four kids right now. My stepson just turned nine, and then we have a three-year-old, two-and-a-half-year-old, and a, a seven-month-old. So our house is pretty busy right now, um, and we'll see uh, where our journey down foster care takes with them. Um, but like I said in the beginning of this video, if you have any questions more about the process, if you have any questions about anything else related to foster care, feel free to comment those below. Um, if there is any other issues surrounding foster care that you would like to see me talk about, um, feel free to comment those below as well. I will do my best to answer everyone's questions um, and just get out the information out there about foster care. Uh, a lot of people think it's a scary process, and it really isn't. Um, it it really was a great process, and I think for us it was an easy process. Um, but there definitely needs to be more loving and caring foster parents out there. A lot of people are afraid about how they're going to feel and how it's going to break their hearts to say goodbye to kids. Um, if it breaks your heart to say goodbye to the kids, then you're doing the right thing and you're being an awesome foster parent. It's never easy to let the kids go. Um, but ultimately the kids deserve the right to be with their families. And so, um, we as foster parents do everything we can to maintain that relationship within, um, some clear cut boundaries. And, um, when we have parents who are working their butts off to get their kids back, we will do whatever we can to support them. Um, and we will be there to lend a helping hand along the way. And so, um, although it's hard to say goodbye to the kids, it's nice to be able to see them reunited with their family, um, and back, um, where they belong. So, um, thanks everyone who watched this. And again, if you have questions, comment them below and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks. Bye.